Hello my peeps! My name is Kat aka Kakibot and I make videos about life and travel around Scotland and Edinburgh. And today I am bringing you the long-awaited part two of our moving house video. Of course this video and the advice in it is based off our experience which was moving from one part of Edinburgh into a different part of Edinburgh but I think you should keep watching if you're moving from overseas or from a different part of the UK because this will be filled with interesting facts. Yes, let's do that. Also, uh, as you can see, I am shooting from a whole new room. You might have seen this room in one video before, but it was kind of dark and not quite ready. I think that there's a lot more going on now, uh, but not quite enough. So don't judge me, I will figure this out. For now, this is what we're getting. So I believe that the previous video ended with us kind of like signing the lease and sending over the deposit and then we just like theft off to Prague and decided to not think about it too much. Um, yeah, our booth was super stressful, even though we did kind of plan it to overlap quite considerably. Like the date of our official moving out and the date of our moving in to here was overlapping probably by a week or so, which I thought would be quite a long time, but it isn't. So if you're planning your own move, please give yourself a plenty of time and also give yourself some time of work because that's another thing we didn't do and um, I almost burnt out at the end of it. Okay, so let's start by the first challenge we had to get through, which was packing all of our stuff. Let me just say that we were definitely hoarding throughout the five years in our old flat. Um, we were really guilty of just like buying a lot of stuff and then when we weren't using it, we would just put it in a box and kind of set it aside and forget about it forever, magically, it's not here, we don't have to worry about it until we have to move, at which point we hated ourselves. Um, so you can imagine that that led to a situation where even though we ordered quite a lot of boxes from Amazon, it just wasn't enough. It's never gonna be enough. However many boxes you're ordering, it's not gonna be enough. Which is why it's pretty smart to kind of like ask around your friends because whoever was moving last is likely to still have some of their boxes they have from their move stack around because, you know, I know from our own experience that it's now been a month since we moved and we still have a whole bunch of boxes around. Uh, one more thing that we did apart from the boxes from Amazon, which by the way are a really nice quality and they came in like a packet with um, the like fragile tape and a tape dispenser. Uh, but we also went to one of the discount like home goods store in Meadowbank. So I think it was like B&M, one of those. And they also have a lot of very affordable plastic boxes. And I know what you're thinking. Obviously, if you're buying plastic boxes, you don't want to just like use them once. Like if you're buying those, it's good to then reuse them in your new house, uh, which is what we're doing. This house doesn't have that much kind of like inbuilt storage as the old one had, which led to all of that hoarding. Uh, so uh, we are really glad we have all of those plastic boxes uh, and they were maybe like, mm, like 250 each and they're really good for all the heavy stuff. So like all of your books, they're also quite good for things that you might be worried about and a lot of like tiny little like tchotchkes that you have lying around because you know, they, I just feel like um, they're less likely to kind of like fall through a broken cardboard box. Not that that happened to us, but I always have that like in the back of my mind. Like what if that box just like disintegrates? What if it's rainy? Yeah, if it's rainy, you will be quite happy to have some plastic. I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, planet. I'm sorry. Old stuff. So when you're going through your stuff and you're, you know, uh, very smartly deciding that you can't just take everything and move it to your new house, uh, because this is an amazing opportunity to actually like marry Kondo the heck out of your stuff, you will find things that you just want to get rid of and often they will be things that are almost new and you might want to think that the best thing is to sell them. And I mean, if you really have the bandwidth for them, I'm not gonna stop you. But I find that like when you're moving, there is so much stuff going on so like going on eBay and dealing with all of the, like the postage and like the waiting and all the communication, it's quite a lot of work. I don't think that you should really be putting that on your on your back while you're also moving and dealing with like with cleaning and like all of the stuff that I'm gonna be talking about down the line in this video. I think that the next best thing is probably giving stuff to charity. I know that charities these days, they kind of are a bit more specific about what they want. They don't really want things that 
you wouldn't buy. Now, I would also add that if you're getting rid of any furniture or like large things, you do have to arrange that in advance. You can basically let your council know online that you have some stuff that needs to be picked up. You do have to pay a couple pounds for it and it does take, I think like two weeks or so usually for them to pick the stuff, unless it's a Christmas tree. I think that Christmas tree pickups are a bit better organized, which makes sense because everyone's getting rid of Christmas trees after Christmas. So the council just like sends out those cars, just like destroying your Christmas trees. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, if, if you need to get rid of like a grand piano, no, don't get rid of a grand piano. <laughs> Give it to us. <laughs> yes. No, don't, we don't have the space. No, Please. Simon, no. Please. Don't forget also there are charity shops that specialize in furniture. So that's another option. I think that if it's in a good state, you might want to just do that or you can like give it away on Facebook. So you're probably curious about how movers work or sometimes here they are just called like a man with a van. So that's usually like a self-employed person with a big car who's willing to help you. Or uh, sometimes they are like a removal van, removal agency, which kind of confused me because I was looking for movers and it just kept taking me to these like removals. I'm like, I don't want my stuff to be removed. I just want it to be moved from point A to point B. So yeah, keep that in mind, just like vocabulary wise. Anyway, I think that their prices are quite friendly and it's definitely something that like you should take advantage of um, unless you have like a lot of stuff to move, in which case maybe you can hire a van yourself, especially like if you feel confident driving it. Do you need a special... Um, oh, so you need like a, a, a special training to, to I, drive it. I think now you need to have a, a thing on your license that allows you to do that, but don't quote me on that. So could you drive a van? I would not feel comfortable doing so. Yes, so you know, follow your heart uh, if you want to drive a van and to be a, a man with a van for a day, then uh, you can fulfill your dreams through your moving process, but um, maybe not the best idea. I really think that uh, hiring the movers is great. They were, the, the ones we moved, those were the Happy to Help Van Limited. And uh, basically for like one van's worth of stuff, we paid 300 pounds, but that included, I think like three or four guys just like taking stuff like, you know, furniture, heavy stuff, heavy boxes. They really did take a lot of things. And then when they came here, you know, they obviously had to take it down the stairs on, you know, the first address. And over here, they had to take it up two flights of stairs. What I liked is that they had this like special cover for mattresses as well. I was really worried about that. It's like, I, I just really imagined they would take our expensive mattress and just kind of like shove it in the van. And it's like, well, it's a bit cuffed and filthy, but like, what did you expect? Plus, as a kind of an extra service, they will also deconstruct and then reconstruct some of your furniture if that's what is needed. In our case, that was our bed. So we super appreciated it. They were super friendly. I really recommend them. I'm pretty sure I found them on Reddit. You know, if, if you if you read it, uh, what's the best removal company in Edinburgh, you will probably find some tips. But these guys were really good. So once your stuff is finally out, which <laughs> to us was like the worst part of the process. We were so stressed. We seriously felt like this. there's always like so much more stuff. We would always like take like 20 boxes in a day away from the old flat. And suddenly there was like 50 boxes worth of stuff just coming out of nowhere. Yeah, that's the downside of having a flat with quite a lot of uh, nice secret storage. It really like, yeah, it doesn't um, motivate you to be a minimalist. Anyway, after that happened and you know, that that was really like the, the toughest bit, uh, we had to arrange the cleaners or technically we arranged the cleaners quite some time before that because obviously you don't want to be arranging them at the last minute. However, what happened is that we kind of got stuck in a conversation with a specific cleaner. We kind of sent them what we need. They sent us a quote. And I think that then we said like, yeah, sure, let's do it. I believe that basically like two days before we realized, oh, we never got any any last message from them. We don't know if they're actually coming. Uh, we called them up, they said they're not coming. So we had to find a different service. Thankfully, we found a cleaning agency called Rely On Us Cleaning, which uh, for 160 pounds, did all of our deep clean. It actually took them like two days or, you know, I guess that you could say like one day because it was like one afternoon and then one morning. And uh, I have to say that the agency, upon kind of checking our flat when we really like officially moved out, so that the standard was really high. Uh, we obviously saw it as well. It 
was really like solid piece of cleaning and like for that price I, I would be really happy to call them up again and have them look at this place because uh, I think that <laughs> our standard of cleaning is definitely not as high as uh, rely on us cleaning okay so this is our last visit to the old flat ever so weird we've been here five years it's never been this clean the windows are clean the floors are clean so much space crazy so that's my office that's where i used to make most of my videos for you as you can see uh, i left my table here and my nice shelves uh, there's all the, the water damage that i keep telling you about yeah but as you can see the views from here are not great I don't love them. And also, we used to have a much better view of Arthur's Seat. Now we just see kind of just the tip. But they built all of that. Those buildings weren't here when we first moved here. So we had to basically sit here through the through the construction. So that, that wasn't great. Yeah, but nice and clean here. Simon's office also looks better than ever. Woo, this little cupboard. See, this is what I meant when I was telling you about box rooms. Look pretty big. I mean, <laughs> the chandelier is quite janky, but fair enough. So otherwise, it's pretty big. Like, you know, it's quite a big space. Definitely okay for an office. Mm. The bedroom. Yeah, so this view was quite nice. We had magpies and, and ravens here. But again, like those buildings beyond the trees. Not super nice. I think the colonies are nicer. Uh, yeah. Hello. The kitchen where Simon is still dealing with stuff. Defrosting the freezer. Or cleaning up the mess from that. Yeah. <laughs> Defrosting the freezer. A task we haven't done in five years. Never mind. You also kind of independently have to organize window cleaning. That was kind of a surprise for me. I think that's um, because we only had windows cleaned once in the five years. Probably not great. But uh, at that point, we basically just called up our letting agency and said, look, like the, the building that's uh, getting built across the road is creating a lot of dust and the windows look gross. And they basically just went, sure, like we will arrange a window cleaner to come over. By the way, that was quite a <laughs> traumatizing experience because I basically came home and saw a guy just like hanging out of my window. And he did have to like enter through our flat as well. So I thought we were being burgled by some sort of like parkour master. It was really weird. It really, it really weirded me out. Anyway, this cost us 45 pounds for five large windows uh, inside and out, which again, I think is a pretty solid pricing. Uh, the windows looked spotless. So again, I would be quite happy to have them clean our windows here. Uh, maybe that's gonna happen sometime soon when I get tired of the, the bird poop that <laughs> lands on our windows from time to time. So I kind of lightly touched on this before, but uh, when you are really finished, finished, finished with your tenancy in your old flat, uh, you are expected to hand in your keys and then they will send in like a i think that they send in an independent person who basically checks the flat um and you know checks how well you cleaned it and if you destroyed anything and they also check if you left something behind because that's kind of an annoying thing here i feel um because like if you leave any anything behind i mean I, I feel like it makes sense with furniture if you leave any furniture behind that you couldn't really arrange you know getting picked up by the council or by a charity shop then obviously they have to deal with it and that costs money and takes time so it makes sense but i'm pretty sure that they're quite unhappy even if you put if you've put on a shelf and then you didn't like undo it um, they will send you like a list of things that you've left behind and they will send you like a scorecard of how well you cleaned ours was pretty good that's that's what it said pretty good now i think that it said like a four star standard so uh hopefully that's four out of five and not four out of ten 
I don't know, I'm not particularly proud of my cleaning skills and I didn't even clean this myself, so I don't really care. <laughs> Obviously, all of this is important because you eventually will want to get some of your deposit back. Because when you moved into your previous house, you gave your agency some deposit, but you didn't actually give it to your agency because in the UK, they are required by law to set up an account with someone else, with a third party that protects your money from, well, I guess both them and your landlord, <laughs> which means that like there is someone who's kind of like fighting for, I mean, both you and the landlord in case something gets destroyed, you know, they will help you, uh, you know, resolve any potential disputes because like sometimes, you know, they, they, there might be some damage, but you know, the question is, is this like regular wear and tear or is it something that's like you really just messed up and you're not going to get your deposit back? <laughs> So yeah, uh, we are currently still in the process of getting our deposit back because um, sometimes it takes a bit of time to get into that third party account. And yeah, I'm just gonna say this thing. When you're moving into your new flat and you're setting up that account with your deposit in it, make sure you have all of your login info. <laughs> Don't have it sent to your work email and then be fired from that job because that will complicate things. Sorry. Yep. And so that takes us to a point where we are finally done with the old flat. Thank God. Uh, you remember we didn't like that flat for the last two years. The first three years were great. Sometimes when I look at footage from the first three years, I'm like, this place was lovely. But the last two years were a nightmare. So thank God we were out. It was it was done and we got to check in into this place. Uh, with our letting agency, you basically just organized a little check-in date online. I unfortunately had a dentist appointment on the day and the time of the check-in, so I wasn't here. But to be honest, I was really expecting there to be like a lot more helpful information going on. And from what Simon told me, the agent really just kind of like walked us through and, or us, walked Simon through and just kind of like showed him like, this is the heater and this is how you turn it on. I'm like, okay. Uh, <laughs> Use your keys. Bye. It, it's interesting because later on we found a lot of things that we should have been told, I think. For example, uh, we didn't have a bin. Uh, we had to order a bin from the council, which uh, a month later we still do not have. So um, if you're moving into a house house, uh, yeah, be prepared to hunt down a bin. Should we, could we buy our own bin? Bin. Really? Mm -hmm. So we can't uh, get our own? Like, are you telling me that the bin men in the morning when it's like 4 a.m. and it's I dark, can't. do they really check? I have no idea. I don't think so. <laughs> Guerrilla bins! <laughs> An important part of this point of your moving in is that you're gonna get the inventory list or document. Usually you will get this emailed or it will be like a part of some sort of welcome package. Uh, they should have uh, some kind of written info and some pictures of everything that is currently wrong with the place that you just moved in. Uh, <laughs> so you're at the place and you just paid like, you know, three, three grand for the deposit and the first month's rent and they will just give you this paper saying like, well, <laughs> here's all the bad things. Um, what is quite important to do as soon as possible is to walk around the house and try to like really like check if there's anything that they missed. Honestly, there's like always something that they miss. Some of the details you really only notice when you start living in the space. Um, what I did was I literally just made sure that before all of the furniture and just all of our general stuff is over here, I kind of walked through the empty rooms and took pictures of all like the little scuffs and marks. There's like a mystery red, I'm guessing lipstick mark in the bathroom. Um, yeah, all of the little things like that. It's good to put them, like you can send them in an email. I put them in a Google folder and I send them over to the agent. They said they have them, so hopefully uh, that's gonna pay off later when uh, we will be fighting for our deposit back. So, energy providers. A lot of you were asking me about this. Uh, it is not super complicated, but uh, yeah, let's walk through the steps anyway. Uh, so basically on the side of your old flat, you will take the energy meter reading and you let them know what the number was, but also your agent or like the, the person that your agency sends in for like the last sort of checkout check, uh, they will also check the meters and bring them to the to the letting agency and then the letting agency gets in contact with the energy company 
and let them know that you're not there anymore. On the side of your new flat, you will usually be told by your letting agent um, who was the provider until now for the previous tenants and you can continue with them but you don't have to usually when you switch you get a better deal so i would probably recommend to do that and then you contact them on your own and uh, in your inventory that i mentioned earlier you should have the numbers from the meters the readings of the meters and you will give your dream energy company all those numbers and they will basically from that know when you moved in and which energy is for you to pay and not the previous tenants. Now with internet, uh, I think that like five years ago or so, it actually used to be quite a stressful bit of looking for a new flat. Because uh, if like us, you are very dependent on fast internet, uh, this is kind of like a deal breaker, right? Like moving somewhere where you can't get super speedy internet is that that can kind of like ruin your career if you really need it and honestly in the past two years it was more important than ever so yeah thankfully i would say that also in the past two or three years all of edinburgh has you know one provider or another giving you the option of getting the super speedy internet so i would say that i would be a lot less worried about it now than i used to but we still did check it before we moved here uh we did find out that we can't get the speedy internet from the same provider but that wasn't really a problem usually all of them provide a very similar standard you know quality standard so not an issue um we had to contact our old provider, I think about like a fortnight in advance. Um, they gave us a date when they would uh, disconnect us from the internet. They did it two days earlier, which was great, because then I just burned through my mobile data. So yeah, uh, be prepared for them to screw you over like that. Um, it will happen inevitably, because uh, they are bitter and petty. On this side, however, the guy who was supposed to come on Monday actually came on Monday so that worked he was really nice from talk talk I think so whoever came to our house to install the talk talk we really liked you he was really nice the internet here is truly speedy and surprisingly despite this being a flat with like two floors I think that the speed is pretty like standardized all over the place um, I'm really happy with it I think it's actually better internet than we used to have with council tax you basically just go on the council website you let them know what your new address is going to be they will send you a letter to the new address and that will tell you how much council tax you're going to be paying uh, we were quite pleasantly surprised because um this is even though like this address is kind of close to the center it falls under I would say a slightly like non-fancy postcode, which is always like financially a win. Mail forwarding. So I was always quite a fan of this service of, you know, you let the Royal Mail know that you're moving, which means that every time they get a letter that's uh, addressed to you specifically and that old address, they will like slap an extra sticker on it with your new address and just like send it your way. I think that's really nice. It kind of like keeps my anxiety at bay when I move. Uh, however, I also have to say that not always it seems to like work perfectly. I did have friends uh, who moved house who, <laughs> who are still picking some of their posts uh, from their old house um, so yeah like clearly some things do kind of slip through the cracks and I definitely would recommend you know as many important things as you can think of just like change the address manually uh, you know any subscriptions and obviously your bank like all of that you should just do on your own don't just kind of get complacent with the mail forwarding um, the price is kind of okay I think it's like 48 pounds for the first person from the address and then another nine pounds for another person I think and is it then nine pounds for each other person yeah I guess so and that's also for six months yes that's for six months you can go shorter you can go three months or you can go 12 months uh, we went for six I think that that gives you quite a good time for seeing all the stuff that gets forwarded to you because whenever something gets forwarded to you it's basically like a little notification of like well these people have the wrong address so if you wish to update them then you can do so uh, 
<laughs> in our old address we used to get so much stuff like so so many kind of like marketing leaflets for like five different tenants that used to live there i think that uh it's it's quite clear that people when they move they kind of take advantage of that being a nice like reset on all like the, the, the ads they keep they they keep getting sent um yeah because i can i can say that basically 80 percent of everything that we got forwarded to us from our old address is just like ads and like marketing leaflets so nobody really needs that something that was kind of new to us in this neighborhood was getting a parking permit in our old neighborhood there was just a free parking area it wasn't even like specifically for a residence it was just it was just parkable and it was easy we didn't have to pay anything uh in this address you do i think that's just simply because there is probably just less parking space for the amount of people who live here our parking permit was 130 pounds per year but when we looked it up it's actually quite interesting how high it can go like if you live in the city center like imagine living in Newtown and you have a large car because that's also something that they take into consideration how large your car is if you have like a Kensington tractor and you live in Newtown you might be paying 500 pounds for your first car and if you have more than one car the second one might be like 700 pounds so yeah um i'm not sure how many of you are in that sort of life situation uh i'm, I'm not gonna judge you for you know having nice addresses and nice cars but um yeah if, if this is your case then be, be prepared it will obviously also be nice to look for a new gp because here in the uk you kind of legally have to kind of go to the GP that's assigned to your postcode or your catchment area. Uh, I don't really like this system because it means that if you do for whatever reason have to move, um, like you know if, if you're just unlucky and you get kicked out of your rentals every let's say two years, then like you can't really build any relationship with your GP. It just kind of sucks I think. Um, we did or Simon. Simon did reach out to some of the GPs in this area and so far everyone told him that they're too full and you can probably imagine that now that we're like just crawling out of the, the lockdown sort of new normal for GP surgeries uh yeah they, they just have a lot on their hands so for now we are still registered with our old GP I think that they can't legally kind of kick us out of there until we find a new one but it is a weird weird limbo because i'm not sure if we can actually like go there and change our address so if they send us any letters those will hopefully come to us through the mail redirection anyway like we are obviously planning to get a new gp as soon as possible i can only hope that's gonna work out i get very kind of like medically anxious so yeah uh let's hope and last thing to mention some of you might be interested in what it's like when you move into a new neighborhood and like how does it work socially what do you do about your new neighbors ironically this is one of the rooms where we do share a wall with our neighbors so um i'm only gonna say nice things about them uh no actually our like immediate neighbors are super nice so with them because we kind of like we don't like share the front door but our front door is right next to theirs so obviously you bump into them a lot and kind of getting to know them came about very naturally uh i don't think that in edinburgh as it is still a city it's not really a, a village or a small town in edinburgh you're not really expected to like reach out to your neighbors and make friends but i would say it's still a practical thing to do i think that especially because of mail it's really good to have a good relationship with your neighbors because uh, i know that this is not the case in every country so i'm going to mention that here the post postmen women posties posty toasty posties here i love posties uh they usually if they can't reach you in your home they will go to like your closest neighbor and just like give them your stuff so from that sort of perspective you can imagine it's good to have good relationships with your neighbors uh, however i don't think that it is like socially expected of you to like go out of your way and like introduce yourself to others um it really depends i think that like in a tenement building or you know apartment building it's definitely not expected i think that in a neighborhood like this where it's like small houses and you know you have more like immediate neighbors you're kind of like assigned your main neighbor it's probably good to like 
keep, keep a good relationship with them. I am planning to bring over some Christmas cookies to our neighbors, definitely the ones next to us and the ones under us, because I think that they have to deal with a lot of our stomping as we're uh, trying to chase the cats into his room and <laughs> just like keep him from uh, eating our garbage and fun stuff like that, uh, which you can probably relate to if you are a pet parent as well. Let us know in the comments below if you are a pet parent and how does it destroy your day-to-day uh, -day zen. <laughs> okay, I think that finally takes me to the end of this video. I really hope this has been practical to you. As always, don't forget that I also exist on Instagram under KakiBot and Kaki Blog. I also have an Etsy store, so if you do like my content and you want to support me financially, you can always buy some of my merch. I do make a lot of uh, Scottish-themed merch like my uh, really cute post stamp enamel pin collection. So if you're a fan of Scotland, I think it will be right up your alley. That was a bit of an aggressive gesture. Okay, so that is the true end of this video and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.